So let's explore this idea of session zero. Now, ideally, when I sit down to run a Dungeons & Dragons game, I want to play what I call a campaign, linking multiple adventures together with consequences, with a background, with a story, with a narrative that together, the players and the DM, we can craft and create this world. And while I might have my story notes and I might have an idea of the campaign from the perspective of a dungeon master, I really don't know how it's going to end. So part of it is this amazing discovery process. Session zero is where before we begin the first adventure, and this could be an informal thing 30 or 40 minutes before, or it could be its own session in itself, we sit down and we talk about character creation. We think about what we're going to want to do. And from the perspective of a dungeon master, I am a big believer in ownership of your character. I want you to be excited. I want you to be passionate about the character that you're going to play because in doing this, that 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 passion, that uniqueness is going to come across in the game and it's going to make the game more dynamic. So I am always open to playing any type of character class or vision that you have, even if it means pulling in a specific type of character from a different source book or working with something specific, if we're playing in a specific setting, you want to bring in a Warforged and we're not playing Eberron, we'll figure out how to do it. So this way, you get excited about the character you want to play. We also use this idea of Session Zero to talk a little bit about character background. Now, for some of us, this character background could be almost a short story, or a number of paragraphs, or it could be a brief bio that this is why my character is adventuring. This is what we're doing. I like to get that feedback as a DM. And it's not something that has to be set in stone in session zero, but I like to begin to get some feedback on your character's background, the motivation, the type of adventuring that you're looking to run, because I will pull that into the campaign. I'll use that as adventure hooks, or I'll use that as a chance to introduce NPCs or other aspects of the game Again, to try and bridge this narrative and to try and create this living world. So it's not just like your characters fell out of the sky onto the table. Here they are. There's a backstory. There's motivation. We also talk about, and I'm very upfront with this, ideally, what level is the game going to end at? And while I can't say exactly, look, it's going to end at level 15 because I don't know where the adventures are going to go. I don't know if you're going to do every side quest. I don't know if you're going to explore every option navigating that. But I'll say, hey, look, we're going to start at level one and we're going to end anywhere from level 10 to 12 or, or 12 to 15 because some character classes play radically different at different levels. A perfect example, a monk, and I love playing a monk. I often play a monk. At the mid to higher levels, they, they really start to come into power. If it's a lower level campaign where we're going to end at level five, maybe you decide, hey, I love monks, but I'm not feeling like a monk at this level. Likewise, if there's a bunch of characters that you want to bring in, multi-class, dual class, depending on the edition of D&D we're playing, maybe you want to explore and say, wow, if I have 20 levels to work with and I do 10 and 10 or I explore different things, I can really create something unique. So I like to be up front and say, this is where we're starting. This is where we're going to end. The idea of session zero, planning, plotting, getting some background, and using it to slingshot us, using us to catapult us into that first adventure.